We're all very, very happy and proud of him. You know, he came over. Not too, pe not, not too many fighters want to fight Virgil. It's really tough matching him up, you know. Uh, but Kinson stepped up. He was there. He came all the way over from, from the UK. He didn't care where he was going to fight him. He just wanted to put on a good show. And, and I think he did, you know. And I want to congratulate him for putting up a good show. He came to fight. He's a warrior. And, and you know, we should all be very, very happy and proud of him. So, congratulations. <laughs> confident you know I work very very hard and I've, I've worked hard my whole life to get to where I am uh, from a lad from the area I'm from in Portsmouth this is huge getting this opportunity is huge and um, I deserved it but not many people from where I'm from get to fight in the States but not only fight in the States headline a golden boy show in America you know uh, it's a dream come true my pride's a bit damaged like the first time I've tasted defeat you know I know I was losing the fight, but all the way through the fight, there was never a time that I felt that I was going to get stopped. I thought I was going to take him the point, take him the points, and be the first person to win that knockout streak. I really did. Uh, in round eight, he caught me with a body shot, um, it hit my hip bone, and then the whole side of this side of me, I couldn't really, couldn't really uh, use this side. The end of the, the end of the eighth, and. Um, you know, he came out the, the ninth round, he hit me in exactly the same spot and it's, like, it's on the hip a little bit and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm devastated obviously but I'm very proud to, to be here to represent my country and I hope I made everyone proud back home. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm Jason Michael, did, did the fight unfold the way you were hoping it would strategy-wise? I knew he would start fast. I knew he would start very fast and it was a it was a hell of a pace early on. It was a hell of a pace, but as the fight went on, I could I could see it going points. I really did. Like I was getting more and more confident that it was gonna reach the final bout. I, I he did slow down a little bit and changed his um, tactics. He was a lot more patient and if anything that's normally would work into my, my hands, you know, somebody slowing down. But uh, he picked a hell of a shot. Um, I said this is boxing like I've never never been in trouble in 22 fights and it, it, it is what it is it is what it is he's a, a hell of a fighter I hope he goes on to win world titles in multiple weight classes hundred <laughs> percent then then um obviously but I'm a little bit a little bit hurt my pride's a little bit hurt you know but it is what it is hey Michael uh, uh, Mr. Al to be able to speak about the podcast uh, first, I want to say uh, shout out to your city and port. And I know it's no consolation uh, prizes in losing the fight, but what you show to the world tonight is that you belong on this level. I know you say your pride is hurt. Yeah. 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 Wow. I don't belong at the level I was fighting at before. But definitely not. I was. I was uh, I was cruising easy, easy points wins to the point where I didn't want to fight them guys. You know, I've had it hard my whole career, and you know, people have told me I deserve a big fight. I deserve to be on the big stage, and I never had to fight to 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 prove that I'm world class. I believe I'm world class. I've never had that win that people can say, "Oh, McKinson's a world class fighter." You know, but although I lost, I hope a lot of people can see that I do belong to. At, at, at world class level, I don't want to go back to domestic level at all. That's too easy for me. Um, hopefully, there's some more big fights out there. Um, you know, 100%. I've, I've proven that I don't mind going to somebody's backyard, being booed to the ring. Like there was a lot of booze to the ring um, today, but there was a lot of cheers coming out of the ring. And so I'm, I'm proud of my performance. I like to watch it back to see how it went, but. If I was, it was hostile coming to the ring and people was cheering me coming out, I must have done okay. Mm -hmm. Jeff. Jeff Zimmerman, FightNews.com. We talked the other day and, and you said you loved that underdog status, mm. coming to Texas for the first time, and, and you did put on hell of a show. Um, I also think you surprised a lot of people standing in the pocket right from the get-go. You came right after uh, Virgil. Was that the plan all along? Because you know, people look at your record, two knockouts, they look at Virgil, he's a bona fide knockout artist. Uh, 
Talk about your strategy there. Yeah, my dad told me off a couple of times in the corner. The plan was to stay long and stay what I'm good at. Um, but there's a few times we were close and I would just want to take every opportunity I possibly can. Um, and if, if I see a shot, I would definitely take it. Uh, you know, uh, to make the most of every little opportunity. But the plan was to try and stay long, um, try and take it to the late rounds where he's never been before. And then I would get to him mentally. But, uh, you know, I only took him one round further than he's been before. But, <laughs> you know, I still took him the furthest out of anyone. Mike, congratulations on a great performance again. Thank you. Not too many people have the courage to come out to Texas and fight a Texas fighter in their own backyard. So all not, respect. Not just a Texas fighter. He's like a hero here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was I was heavily booed coming into the ring, but I loved it. I loved it. I soaked up that atmosphere. Like that's the type of stuff that I'm built for, and I thrive off of it. You know, and coming to people's backyards. Like, I've done it, Tom. Like I've done it as of like on my rise, I've done it on small shows and stuff like that, but I've got to do it on a Golden Boy show, you know, in front of the world, fighting a guy that's tipped for superstardom. You know, I'm very, very proud of where I've, where I've come. Um, not just for, I'll keep saying my, my city of Portsmouth and things like that, but for my country, this is big. Not many people are queuing up to, to fight Ortiz and I jumped to the opportunity. When, when there was talk of the Avenician and then it might not happen, I went onto Twitter and said, just send me the original contract. You know, 100%, I'm, I'm a very confident guy. I work very hard. I really did believe I could pull it off tonight, but Virgil is, is something else. He's, um, you know, he, there's not all of that hope for no reason. Uh, like I said, I, I hope he goes on to win multiple world titles because then it makes me look good. <laughs> you know, we, 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 talked, we talked in the ring a little bit, and what I told Michael is that us at Golden Boy, we would love to have him back. You know, there's some good fights we can put them in. You know, there's Alexis Rocha, mm. there's a, there's Blair Cobb, which you know you personally want to fight. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll but, fight any of them. But but you know, we love fighters like this. You know, he comes out and he put on a show. He put on a show and and, and proved. You know, the fans cheered him on after because it takes a lot to come over to a, to another country to fight a guy in his backyard, like we said. Um, and we would love to have him back at some point. You know, so we'll we'll be talking to Matt Room and. Uh, we can match him up with one of our other Welsh weights. We would love to have him back. Thank you Absolutely. Very much. Thank you. We got a nurse here. Hey, Craig Christie, uh, we have a nurse here. Hey, Kim Rusick. Hey, what's going on? 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 Hey, what's going on?